Uh, I did some research this week. Uh, we're in a time in history where people are stressed out. We're exhausted, right? There's been a lot. Everybody has been through a lot in the last 18 to 24 months. People are they're frustrated with the feeling of being exhausted. They're frustrated with the feeling of being stressed out. And so I, I, I wanted to find some numbers to put to it. And I found out that the American Psychological Association, the APA, did a recent study and found that 84% of adults are experiencing prolonged periods of stress. 84% of adults are experiencing prolonged periods of stress. Out of that 84%, the most common side effects of the stress was anxiety, sadness, and anger. I understand that most of us have some kind of emotional pressure on us some way, like it's, it's hard to feel comfortable and relaxed nowadays. Uh, so it's normal to have an experience with these, with these types of emotions. You're not, you're not by yourself, uh, you're not isolated if you're struggling with these, being stressed out, being anxious, being sad, even being angry or just flat out exhausted. You're not alone. We are all in this together. I wanted to, uh, to, to use that survey to, to kind of bring up a point and to, and to say it's normal to experience these emotions and it's not okay to take it out on your family. Not in your household and not here in the body of Christ. I get it, it's tough. Sometimes you, it's, it's hard to control when you get angry, it's hard to control when you get sad but ask for help, right? The body of Christ builds each other up. We are to be compassionate with each other, to be kind to each other, to be gentle with each other. It's okay to ask for help if you're stressed out and you need, some, and just, you need somebody to talk to. It's okay to reach out and ask for help. It is not okay to let that stress carry over into sinful behavior within your family or here at, at church, really anywhere you go. It's not okay. The body of Christ is here to help. Which leads us into verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I hope I can forgive people the way that God has forgiven me. Uh, I inserted a thing here. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to read two quick verses, Romans 5, 6 through 8. Uh, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If someone has sinned against you, if you're on the receiving end of anger, rage, somebody talking about you, if you're on the receiving end of that, I know it's tough, have a forgiving heart. I'm glad that way, way before my first sin, Christ died on the cross for me. Before I was ready to accept it, Christ died for me. Be wise in your relationships, but if someone has sinned against you, have a forgiving heart. It doesn't mean you need to put yourself in a vulnerable position, vulnerable position all the time, but be willing to forgive. Be willing to forgive and be wise in your relationships. If you carry around bitterness, that's not helpful for anybody. And I know that's tough. I know it's easy to stand up here and say, and just, you know, read from the Bible, write down a few sentences and read it back. That's way easier said than done. I get it. But I'll go back to the body of Christ builds each other up and we, we bear with each other and we help each other get through these things. Verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Be thankful for what you have. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish each other with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paul kind of starts to wrap this up with a message of peace and of unity. 
Paul also teaches here that we're to hold each other accountable. The word admonish that he uses in verse 16 means to advise someone earnestly or to firmly warn them of something to be avoided. I'll say that again. To admonish means to advise someone earnestly or to firm, firmly warn of something to be avoided. In our covenant relationship, if you're a member of the church, we read through the covenant, we all agree to, to how we're going to treat each other in this covenant relationship of the Seventh Baptist Church of Shiloh. And one of the points in the covenant is that we are to admonish each other kindly, right? Not with a heavy hand, not in a way that makes somebody feel like they're not good enough or they don't belong here. But at the same time, we are called to hold each other accountable. We are called to give that firm warning of a situation that could be avoidable. We are called to uh, advise people with, with earnesty uh, and not just allow them to continue to sin. But do it with a, with a spirit and an attitude of peace and an idea that we are growing towards Christ together, not from an attitude of, I'm better than you. Or, you know, I'm glad I don't have to deal with the sin the way that you do. That, that's not the right attitude. Um, most importantly, whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. When our focus is on him, there is much more room for grace. The less we focus on him and concern ourselves with our own preferences and struggles, the more problems we tend to have. When I start to get a message ready, I write out an outline. So I'll read, I'll, I'll kind of study, like pastor asked me, hey, can you talk about family living in the kingdom of God? And so I'll search through the Bible and I'll find something that I feel like the Lord has uh, put on my heart to share. And so I'll come up with, you know, Colossians 3 and I'll read through it, kind of read ahead of it, behind it, see what, what the context is of what he's writing. And then I'll start to make an outline. And so I'll read a few verses. And, oh, that's a good point. Write it down, write it down. And then from there, I'll just go through kind of verse by verse and, and build out, fill out an outline that way. And I really thought the bullet points of this outline that I made for this message uh, was a good place to, to wrap it up and, and give you guys something to remember. So if you're a note taker, this would be a good time to get your pen and paper out. Notes on family living in the kingdom of God. Number one, we are hidden with Christ. Christ is our shield. We are hidden with Christ together. Point number two, we are to get rid of sinful attitudes and behaviors. Take them off like an old stinky coat. Get rid of it. Point number three, we are to put on attitudes of compassion, kindness, and gentleness. Point number four, the family of God is all equal, regardless of tradition, how long you've been a believer, or what your ethnicity is. We are all equal to God. Point number five, we are to forgive each other and bear with each other. And finally, point six, we are to be thankful and encourage each other. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for uh, the message to the Colossians, Lord, the message of family. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to work on our hearts. Lord, uh, help us be a strong family together, Lord. Help be, when, be with us in our households. Lord, help us, help us deal with uh, the stress and anxiety of life and help us to stay focused on you. Lord, I just pray that you would help encourage us, Lord, to, be, uh, to build each other up, to treat each other with kindness and gentleness and equality. Lord, and help us to take off and put away uh, attitudes of, of slander and anger. Lord, be with us today. Uh, give us a sense of peace as we move forward. Amen.